Welcome to Channel AMEC, your insight to the Australian visa system. Good day everyone, my name is Carl Young, your online YouTube visa consultant. Are you interested about migrating to Australia? Why don't you consider to subscribe to my channel and turn on the little bell right here? So once we got all the updates and news, you'll be the first one getting all the insight. Now, uh, today, um, I'm going to reflect back to an inquiry uh, which I received uh, from the YouTube comment in regards to provide a more of detail of a skill assessment for ICT professions, which we, we're going to go through detail with the Australian Computer Society. I thought I have done one before, and when I go back to my, the library of all the video I have done, actually haven't actually done a specific skill assessment for the ICT profession so today I'm gonna take you into those details so let's jump into it as we there is some complexity of um, how they assess Australian qualification versus the uh, offshore overseas uh, qualification and plus I'm gonna give you all the accredited courses that's been listed in the ACS so let's jump into it now if you're familiar with um, the skill assessing authority uh, you might be able to actually Google uh, and t basically typing ACS and then what you need to do is punch in migration skill assessment now I'm not a big fan of this uh, web page because uh, you might notice uh, the detail is not actually at he in here uh, everybody will thought the detail will be in the uh, in the, within the white background but the detail is actually underneath here so these are the nitty-gritty that we're going to go through so today i'm going to take you into actual detail of the summary of criteria and the actual guideline of the uh, applicant for to become an ict profession under the skill uh, getting a positive skill assessments and also the accredited uh, courses that's been listed under acs okay now the first thing is uh one i've already got that open so i'm going to jump into that uh, PDF straight away um, it's actually very complicated what I'm gonna do uh, you might want it to magnify a little bit uh, in order to actually read those tiny words I'm not too sure why ACS uh, as a um, professional organization uh, they create the form the table is you know the table is so big but the word is look at this it's so tiny anyway uh, you might want to download them yourself and have a read there so the summary here basically provides you uh, the overview of what you can do so the top two with the gray background is basically that the um, the qualification that you can actually get in Australia and how would that be assessed under ACS criteria so let me read them out and then um, explain a little bit with each column and field and all that so the first one says Australian bachelor and degree or higher so you can actually study bachelor or master degree in Australia and has to be ICT major that's well, pretty simple you can you cannot study uh, hospitality and get assessed under ACS anyhow so I think this this field is quite redundant you don't need that anyway hey, obviously come to ACS you you will know that your profession is under ICT so the required qualification closely related to ENSCO that means <laughs> and they should have uh, put that into as a, a word reference of things closely related to nominated occupation <laughs> of course <laughs> I, I don't know why they do that because see these two feel they they are basically <laughs> redundant um, if they study uh, the, you know if, if they done the right database courses you know uh, redundancy you need to remove them but anyhow uh, possibly the table isn't created by an IT profession so anyhow uh, so if you're a network or um, cyber security specialist obviously you don't want to assess you yourself under a database man managerial or analysis that's pretty uh, obvious now required relevant work experience there's no requirement work re relevance uh, if you are only applying for what they call provisional skill assessment that's under for uh, 485 years so they should have turned this all around so if you're applying for 485 visa at the at the front here 
they should name it 4A5, you don't need war experiences. But if you do want to get a full skill assessment, that's post Australian uh, Studies Skill Assessment, uh, you need to get one year of ACT war experience in the closely related uh, the, the occupation that you're in. Or perhaps you wanted to jump into a professional year program, which is equal to a year of work experience as well. So uh, again, the, the, the table is really uh, designed, uh, not really readable. But uh, anyway, that's the reason why I'm here to pro provide this video to, to do the um, explanations. Now, what we see here, down here, it, all the white one and the orange one, uh, are the occupation, uh, the qualification that you actually obtain and gain overseas or so not in Australia. So if we if you have studied something in USA on the ICT um, and it's bachelor or higher, uh, then the, you have a disadvantage because if you wanted to get uh, skill assessed, you are required to have additional one year. So you need two years of ICT work experience in order to actually pass that full steel system. So obviously ACS or the government of Australia is promoting people to actually study ICT in Australia if you want to migrate to Australia. So that's that that's the that's a problem. There. Okay. Now there's also look at here. If you have studied bachelor higher and ICT major and you have work not in the closely related nominate occupation, for instance, that you are. Uh, so this is not open for if you study in Australia, but if you are overseas, okay, and not in Australia, you study um, uh, the software engineering, all right? And then you end up yourself doing multimedia design and things like that. So you move more towards website and the uh, web apps and all that kind of stuff. So obviously that's not related to, not, not directly related to software programming, okay? Then you are required to have four years of relevant ICT work experience in order to pass that positive skill assessment. You see that right here. Okay, now there is ICT major and ICT minor. Now the problem here is that obviously if you have studied something but you have not really uh, <laughs> one is the word is not matching the other one is the uh, the qualification is not matching towards what you actually did or do okay so it will it will it will traverse and making the word experiences requirement much longer so that will require five years of work, relevant work experience and if you have not studied matching the exact uh, major and work not in that exact major uh, and then you will require to demonstrate have six years i mean i haven't really <laughs> for for these ones um these three down here I, I i have never done any skill assessment for these kind of client because if they have worked so long um they obviously if you want to go through general skill migration the the points they get they get less point because obviously their age is <laughs> it's, it's much higher and they, they, and sometimes they're passing 45 years old so obviously you can't even join or get into yourself into a skill migration there now underneath here i'm not going to go through too much because this is um qualification less than bachelor so if you can look at the uh, the years of work expenses require that is just too much for a person if they have worked six years in the field uh, and they haven't even grasped uh, into some I mean it's not impossible but relatively uh, your points in EOI will not be sufficient enough okay anyway um, it, it's still possible but it's that lifetime experience I haven't seen anyone like that actually so the the prefer is the top four i mean the top two uh in the white field and obviously if you want to uh, migrate you you would have just studied something in australia so for example if you have done six year work experience uh, and your previous qualification was in diploma why don't you consider to study two years master you get an additional qualification and you get better opportunities there and more points in order to migrate there so that's the combination that we will actually suggest and advise now go into the detail of the guideline obviously it's it, it's it's very bulky now the detail here i wanted to talk to you about is obviously the um the uh i'm not going to go through all these um 
uh, certifying degree and what you need to provide. Uh, here, I want to tell you about the assessment process. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about this. The, um, obviously, you need to provide all that uh, documentations fully. Uh, if you pr provide partial, uh, then it will be uh, basically insufficient. Uh, and obviously you're not deemed to be able to actually be assessed now the the detail here is generally lies on the word references because qualification wise you, you would have have your uh, certificates and transcripts so that wouldn't be any issue there uh, the more issue is more towards uh, the word experiences so uh, obviously if that is something if that document is not in English you need to get translated uh, and there are several ways to go through uh, I've basically covered them uh, so the top two is if you were an uh, international student in Australia you go through temporary and then post study and then the third one is basically going straight uh, as your qualification and works because we're accrued uh, overseas not in Australia okay now go to into the work experience where are we okay and maybe I should uh, just do a search. It will make it quicker. Oh, and there's a lot of work experiences here now. Uh, I think it's down underneath somewhere. I was looking at it previously. Uh, I'm not going to go through detail of post study work because that's uh, covered in the 4A5 um, uh, video there. Now, qualification obviously has to be in ICT profession. We're almost there uh, now vendor clar certification now here we go okay now <clears throat> obviously you have if you have achieving and become ict professions there's a lot of uh, vendor required certification so these can be provided as well now they recognize microsoft and all these ones expert level cisco uh, there's all that le level now employment that's the detail there now in order to achieve the points that you want for your work experiences you need to demonstrate you at least work 20 hours per week now that's not too bad because that's only a part-time but the salary level and things and detail of work description required to be uh, noted and stated by the employer a lot of people that left their job and then never go back to their HR manager or their boss and they all the business has been seized or terminated they are unable to actually get that done so uh, that's another thing they, they actually here does teach you what you require so employment reference you need to get a start finish date um, there will be a format position title description as I just tell you break down any earlier roles hours of work country employment undertaken company letterhead you cannot just have an A4 page and someone s signed it and done it has to be a letterhead with a company logo on it so the um, uh, ACS could actually track and c uh, contact the person to actually verify stuff. Now, if you were uh, the business were uh, terminated, you cannot find your boss or HR manager can verify you anymore. There's a way to do this. Okay, now 7.4 statutory declaration affidavits. You can actually declare this. Okay, and you has it has to be witnessed uh, by a justice of the peace in order to actually get that done but obviously you need to confirm with some third party evidence for example uh, tax payments income or salaries uh, in order to you cannot just write it and, and, and declare and, and, and sign it swear uh, you need to have a third party supporting evidence in order to do, do that okay so that's another way to do it okay uh, or perhaps getting a third person who possibly a colleagues of yours previously to provide this uh, affidavit or statutory decoration to confirm that you were uh, working in such profession so again uh, it ha can be from junior colleagues stating referees um, and all that okay now self-employed same thing uh, you need to demonstrate all that now you need to have a, a portfolio and perhaps a, a uh, supporting evidence or income that you you actually made from a self-employed now finally a lot of people want to want to ask this now the accredited course all you need to do is you go to um google and you punch in acs space accredited course and you'll be able to find yourself with all these lists of um 
University in Australia, and their accredited course uh, assessed under ACS. Now, bear in mind that does not cover every single course there, okay? Because courses does vary every year and every semester. So it doesn't mean that study something not listed here won't count. Uh, it will still count, but you just wanted to make sure uh, every time you want to enroll yourself for example go to monash i want to study ict make sure you study all these ones so you don't have to verify further assessments required it's much easier to go in that way a faculty science engineer so you want to study these in in qut or bond or rmit so it's all here that's the the beauty of this there are also two overseas university recognized and accredited courses in acs as well so anyhow that's for the video today. Should you have more Korean questions, more than welcome to leave a comment right down below. And I see you next video. Goodbye.